This is All India Radio. In the program Spotlight, we now bring you a discussion on Unlocking Space Sector for Private Participation, Vikram Rocket Launch, a major milestone in the history of ISRO. The participants are Dinesh Sharma, Science Commentator, and Arjun J. Chaudhary, AIR Correspondent. I'm joined by uh, Sri Dinesh Sharma, who's a science uh, reporter, and today we'll talk about unlocking the space sector for private participation. And uh, we have the Vikram S rocket launch uh, today from Sri Harikota, and the rocket itself will cross the Earth's atmosphere and go uh, to a level of 90 kilometers above the sea and then land into the Bay of Bengal. Uh, Mr. Sharma, warm welcome to you on the program. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Shaman, what is the implication of private participation in uh, rocket building and its launch? What are the implications for space research and uh, defense? Yeah, I think there are several ways to look at today's launch. It is significant in many ways. Of course, number one is that it is the first privately built rocket which has been launched. And, but not in terms of the size or anything, but it has been completely built in the private sector and launched by ISRO. So that is one significance. Then there are, uh, as you're asking about the implications, there are policy implications of this whole uh, launch. Then there are business implications. So today's launch was done by this private company which is based in Hyderabad. And they developed this rocket in, say, about uh, almost two years, which is quite astounding given the kind of uh, work that has to go into designing a rocket, fabricating it, and making it launch ready. And, but today's was only the first step. It was kind of a developmental flight, you can say. It is not operational nor commercial, but it's a developmental flight. What does a developmental flight mean? It is required to test the technology. It, it is a mix of several technologies, new and old, which are being put together. There are propulsion, there is avionics, there are new materials which are used, there is telemetry. So all these uh, subsystems and technologies go into making of a rocket. And when it is launched, they need to be tested. How does it work? So I suppose the launch was successful. So they'll analyze the data and that will go into making their full-fledged rockets. They are calling it the Vikram series, through which they will be going to a higher altitude, putting the satellites into space, and then perhaps they will go into a commercial operation where they will be able to launch satellites for others. So it's a stepwise system that's how it, the space missions work. You can't straight away say that, okay, I'm entering a commercial arena. So yes, it's the private sector's entry to the launch of rock. But it is not as if uh, private sector has not been participating in the existing program of ISRO, the Indian Space Research Organization. For a long time, ISRO has been engaging private sector to supply a number of systems, for example, PSLV, which has had several successful launches and it has including the missions to the moon and the Mars, it's a lot of it. In fact, 70 to 80 percent of it is built in the private. But the design and technology goes from ISRO. The private sector makes it and ISRO then launches. So private sector involvement in ISRO's activity so far has been there, but in an indirect way. The ownership of the technology, the ownership of the system, everything is with ISRO. It is a ISRO product, but a lot of uh, components and you know materials that go into launching uh, operational satellites come from private players. So, private sector has been there in a different role. So, what I would say is this launch, the role of private sector is changing, whereby it is getting into making rockets on its own and launching uh, with ISRO. So, some kind of a change is happening, so to say, with this launch. So, uh, Skyroot Aerospace, the tech startup company that you're mentioning, which has developed a Vikram yeah. S uh, rocket at the development stage and its partnership with ISRO, uh, even the firm is being launched by a former ISRO engineers. So, this partnership that you're saying will have commercial implications in terms of launching a satellite. What are the other synergies that we're likely to see from this partnership that a private sector brings to aerospace? You know, space technology needs a lot of technical and technological capabilities which develop over a period of time. So, fortunately, those capabilities in India have existed because of ISRO. For example, that these two founders of Skyroot come from a background of ISRO and they have hired a lot of people who have worked in different agencies of ISRO. So, the technological skills and the capabilities are getting transferred from ISRO to the private sector. So, the ecosystem which has been developing over the decades, that is helping the startups which are coming up today. 
and startups are taking advantage of a new ecosystem which is developing not only in india but globally you have to look at it in a larger context why there is a surge of startups in the space sector suddenly say in the past 5 years 10 years 15 years beginning with spacex in america and a lot of entrepreneurs joining because nasa opened it up and there has been a change in the technology there has been a change in the way launches are taking place earlier space was a strategic sector which only national space agencies handled then they started developing commercial applications applications of space technology change so a lot of those applications are in the private sector so you needed to involve private sector then the, there is a shift space is a capital intensive work you must remember you need lot of money to get into any part of the space sector so space is a capital intensive work but then in the past 10 years there has been a shift from the large satellite which used to cost a huge amount of money and if they fail all that money goes into the drain or the sea perhaps so from the last satellite there has been a shift to the smaller and micro satellite so instead of launching one large satellite companies thought of why not launch a constellation of say 50 satellites small satellites so even if one or two of them fail at the rest of the constellation remain so there's been a shift to smaller satellites that really opened the arena for smaller players to come in with the satellite design so one can afford you can't afford a satellite for half a billion dollars but you can afford a satellite which costs couple of million dollars so that way so that shift in the overall market the space market is helping the entry of space startups in india and many other countries i would say and that uh, indian companies are taking advantage then there are new technologies which have emerged for example 3d printing some of the critical parts of this rocket were 3d printed so that is a new thing additive manufacturing communication technology is changing miniaturization is happening so what uh, is critical in space is that if you can carry a payload at a lesser fuel cost then your launch becomes cost effective so if you have a smaller satellite if your uh, electronics is uh, miniaturized all these technologies have become available in the recent past so and then the third element is the availability of capital for example venture capital funding is available for space because the venture capital see it has a less risky proposition i am not launching a satellite which cost me 200 300 million dollars because if it fails then the venture capital will not put their money in on it but if the risk is lower venture capitalists will go there for example skyroot has raised almost 500 crores from venture capitalists so there is a faith in startup okay then they can succeed this whole ecosystem you have to understand that why suddenly startups are coming up and why they are succeeding and because of several factors technology policy venture capital so in that context i'll put the indian startup system Mr Sharma Vikram S uh, this startup flight as one can call it has a mass of 546 kilograms uh, length of 8 meters and a peak velocity of Mach 5 which is uh, hypersonic it's a 5 minute uh, flight time so basically this rocket is uh, piercing the atmosphere of the earth going 90 kilometers and falling into the bay of bengal because it's developmental what is the cost involved just for this one flight that uh, Vikram S has entered into No, it is difficult to say the cost involved because their company is not uh, revealed. Normally, they don't do. Even if so, doesn't tell you how much particular mission cost. But since it's a development of flight and they have worked on for almost two years, and new technologies have gone in, so they have raised from the market the venture capitalists about 500 crores. But all of that would not have gone into this one particular flight. And and given the fact that a lot of developmental costs are involved, so once they perfect the technology, then the cost might come down. But one doesn't know how. Much this particular flight is called because, as I said, it is a technology demonstrator. You have to test and validate certain technology, which will go into their you know, future full-fledged missions, which they are calling the Vikram series. So these are all developmental costs. Whatever money you have gone into this particular flight could be counted as developmental cost to pay because that that's where when you will establish yourself as a player, then you will be able to attract commercial propositions from the other players to launch their satellites or do similar launches for them. That will happen. But to demonstrate and to establish yourself as a viable player, you need to invest. I'm sure the investment is heavy at this present stage. So let's have a look at time. Uh, apart from cost, uh, when will the uh, pilot flight now graduate into an orbital flight? When will that happen? What's the time frame? Unlike uh, national space agencies or like 
ISRO, which have a time frame where they work and they announce their, you know, flight. But I would suspect that it will happen pretty soon, given the fact that within two years, they could come to this stage of developing, designing, developing, fabricating and launching a full-fledged rocket, at least a development stage. One could expect in the next couple of years, they could go into a full-fledged mission because remember that they will have to undergo a couple of more development of flights before they could really call them as a commercial launcher. So even though this is a technology story, it's also a startup story. What's the ecosystem like? What kind of deregulation has the government of India introduced for startups like Agni Cool and Skyroot Aerospace to raise funding from venture capitalists and to partner with ISRO? Yeah, there are two things. One is, uh, like any other startups, they have to go to the venture capitalist, capitalists with a plan, with an innovation, what they want to do, how they want to grow and uh, make money in, say, five years, three years, and all that. So venture capitalists will take the risk based on that. So the regular uh, caveats which apply to all kinds of other startups apply here. But remember that space is always a risky business. Things can go wrong at any time and so one risk, that amount of risk is always there. So you have to keep that in mind, which doesn't apply to, it may apply to other kind of startups also. If you're going to the market and if your product is, what do you do? So apart from that, what has happened is uh, ISRO has opened up in the past two years in the sense that, uh, as I said before, ISRO was uh, taking help from the public sector, uh, from uh, private sector and other uh, you know, public sector agencies also as a, they were the vendors. So now the situation has changed where ISRO's facilities are being used by the private sector. So this needed a policy change as a framework under which uh, private sector could use the facilities of ISRO. For example, even if you have a rocket or even if you have satellite, you still need facilities of ISRO in the sense of ground facilities, your launch pad, your telemetry and tracking and things like that, and the control room and all. So which ISRO is going to provide the, the agreements which is, is signing with a number of startups. And uh, so that policy framework had to be designed and therefore this uh, special new agency was created in space, the authorization agency for the private sector, which is kind of uh, facilitating the interaction between ISRO and uh, startups. So that has been working. So that is one. And ISRO also has its uh, commercial arm, the New Space India Limited. It had unbreaks then another company was floated. So which is to commercialize ISRO's technology. So private sector could get technology from there. You know, there are all kinds of things can happen. So this uh, main interface was created in the form of right. space because you needed certain mechanism to how do you the two set of players cooperate. So that has happened. And still there are a few areas, I would say the space law needs to be enforced. There are certain uh, legal issues which I'm sure will be addressed uh, as we go further. Uh, Mr. Sharma, uh, finally, uh, the branding of the rocket which is part of Mission Praram, the pilot flight, uh, is uh, being named after the award-winning physicist Vikram Sarabhai, who is uh, also known as the father of the Indian space uh, program. Do tell us something about Vikram uh, Sarabhai, who was also instrumental in developing nuclear power in India, briefly. He is the founder of uh, space program in India, and uh, the Indian space program started the sounding rockets, and what we launched today was also a sounding rocket in a sense. So, Sarabhai really was a visionary in the sense that, you know, he envisioned the, the use of space. And you remember, it happened at a time when the space was a political weapon in the Cold War era. So, there was a rivalry developing between the USSR and America in the 60s. But at that time, Vikram Sarabhai said that, no, we want to use space technology not for any, you know, strategic and war purposes or Cold War purposes, but for peace and for national development. So, therefore, uh, he designed some programs whereby space technology could straight away be used for uh, national uh, development, like for education, for rural development, for reaching out to new areas and communication at a time when uh, nothing existed. So he thought of space applications even before we could uh, develop satellites and, you know, rockets of our own. And uh, that was his vision, to use space for national development. And I think that has remained ingrained in the philosophy of his throw all these years. Well, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Dinesh Sharma, for being with us on this program. You were listening to a discussion on Unlocking Space Sector for Private Participation, Vikram Rocket Launch, a major milestone in the history of ISRO. The participants were Dinesh Sharma, science commentator, and Arjun J. Chaudhary, AIR correspondent. 
This program was produced and presented by the News Services Division of All India Radio. You can listen to it on our mobile app, News on AIR.